Okay, we got the uh, after cooler set up in the mill here. Yesterday uh, we went ahead and we clamped it on here. Uh, we had to order a helicoil kit to uh, fit the metric threads. I just didn't have, I didn't have one um, in stock. Uh, now we do for uh, eight millimeter, 1.25 thread. And uh, we're gonna go ahead. We were successful on two out of six. That's 30 percent chance of getting studs out of this individual item. I know I said 50-50 there before, but I didn't get three. I only got the two. All right, this is about how I go about getting a broken bolt out of there, and uh, let's get it on. On this first one yesterday, I got a little excellus, so I've already done this procedure, but I come in with a uh, uh, two-flute center cutting end mill, and I clean up the very top of the bolt there. So getting center location it's the most crucial thing on getting a bolt out. Uh, we're going helical, so we're going back in with the same size bolt. So there's minimum uh, amount of material that uh, we'll have in there to uh, tap and actually insert a helicoil. Then I put a straight piece of steel stock. The diameter that I happened to find, the, the chamfer that the holes were machined originally uh, is still very visible and it was done the same time the tapped hole was done. So its alignment can be really done real nice with uh, just an eyeball. You're just centering up the blunt end of the, the shank with that register. And that's, that's how I'm gonna locate all the centers on, on the four that we have to work with here. All right, once, uh, once I've got it centered, I come in with a center drill. center drill hole. It, basically the, uh, the the drill size for the helicoil is uh, just a little bit above 5 uh, I took half of that and there's a 5 30 seconds drill. What I want to do is I want to go through that stud and I want to feel the, the, the void below the, uh, the stud and it's kind of like a probe. Uh, it lets me get down there and feel what it is like. Also it's a pilot drill centered with the, the broken off bolt. And I've had more success on coming like right on the money. Um, and that's that's what I shoot for every single time. It takes you a little bit longer. We gotta do one hole at a time. I'm not just like doing this operation and come on over here because I'd have to reset up on every hole. This way here, I pick where center is and then I go with it. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. I went through and then I went down and set the set the bottom yeah I'm gonna find out what the the, the depth that the uh, machine knows at and uh, that's what I mean about probing I'm bringing the drill bit you know pretty close to the top there one inch uh, I got the uh, the dial here to tell me that so we got one inch one inch to play with so we, we just don't want to bust out on this side right here we want to know what they got so uh, it looks like uh, there was about three quarters of an inch of threaded bolt in, in, the, in the depth. So there's a quarter inch pocket down underneath. Now the helicoil comes with a uh, 2164th drill bit. And uh, what we're doing here is we're, we went ahead and we threw in uh, one of our crash bits, one of our uh, sacrifice tools um, is what I'd like to call it. Uh, because we have uh, we have the remnants of that bolt in there, and we know there's a bunch of trash and uh, and um, corrosion and rust and all that around that outside of that bolt. Because we we pull out, we pulled that. That's the one with the welded nut on it, and here's the one that we actually got. Uh, you can see galling on the end of the threads here. We got rust, everything else in there. I just like to keep a good bit in there. We will come in with this after we actually have all the crap out of that hole.
Okay, we've cleared out the hole all the way down to the bottom. And it looks good. It looks like we took every bit of threads out of there. I don't see any uh, OD of the threads. And uh, we'll go in there with the uh, helical tab drill. tap in. No, I'm not going to power tap it. Um, I like putting it in the chuck because I can spin it nice and true. Aluminum is soft material. You can't do this with every alloy, but on the aluminum it's kind of handy. And then I can I can bring it into the hole and the, uh, the spindle lets it tap. So it's like a uh, just a tap guide. And it'll follow the hole right on down to the bottom. Okay. And I like to release it. Just don't want any for, uh, false forces on the... Uh, on the tap on the way out. Nice and true hole. A little air. Nice clean threads. Uh, yesterday when we investigated we ordered extra uh, helicoils. We, we picked the size 16 millimeters. It's, it's almost three quarters of an inch in length. It is definitely long enough or exceeds the length uh, specifications for the width of bolt. I like using a tab handle on, on these. It, it beats a crescent wrench and things like that. Not, not that sometimes you have to use those because you might be up against the shoulders. All right. Now I like a helicoil to be almost one thread down below the surface so that I make, and you can always put this tool back in before you break the tang off. Remember, before you break the tang off, once you break the tang off, you're, you're, you're done. Alright, I like that. Let me give you a shot of that. They give you a little tool and kit there to break the tang, and it's, it, it takes no force at all. All right, that hole, last thing, check it with a bolt. All right, one down, three to go, and tap out those holes. We'll check and see if uh, they're gonna need uh, a coil or if uh, they're going to stand on their own. Actually, uh, go ahead and run our tap down in here. Usually if it's firm, it is peeling out something, but there was a lot of galling going on when that bolt was pulled out. You can see a lot of the aluminum was rolled into the threads. And you don't really know how much percentage of threads you have in there until you clear all the crap out. You know, 
those look pretty good. We, we finished drilling and tapping these for the helicals. We'll put the helicals in there in just a second. Uh, this whole original threads look very good. We're going to leave it. This back one over here, but the first four threads look pretty good. But down below that, it uh, is pretty well corroded, rusted, and, and the threads are gone. We're going to throw a helicoil in here. It's right here. Let's do it now uh, and be done with it. All right, here's the last helicoil. A little time consuming, but it was saved. The part was saved. We got it apart, and the customer can reassemble this thing now. Uh, you see, not everything clamps into a vise on a mill. Uh, we got stand up on blocks, and we're toe clamping it down. But we got it registered at the right uh, support on the table to give the alignment. All right, we've got the the four drilled out, and uh, we replaced the one that we weren't happy with the thread contact. Uh, in there after everything was removed. It was missing some threads down underneath. It had like three good threads on there. Um, it, it, they look good, okay? And also too, there's that question, you know, is there some damage that you can't physically see in the hole? So we went ahead and we redid that. This one, one out of six holes was 100%. You saw the way I went about trying to get bolts out, okay? Uh, you, you, if you're gonna use heat, you need to use enough heat. Um, if you try vice grips, don't waste a lot of time. Give it an attempt. If it grabs, it grabs. If it doesn't, it's only a 25% factor on using vice grips, I, I feel. Um, last resort, welding the nut on there. Uh, very good. Uh, we joined. At least we were able to get something on there so we continue with our regular practice of the heat. And uh, one of those snapped off anyway. We, you know, we, we, we did that on a couple others. So, it, it, but we're not worried about that. Don't if you're a mechanic and you're breaking a fastener, taking it out, there's no shame in that, okay? Um, taking and trying to center punch and pistol drill this thing and do it freehand, that's foolish. Uh, you saw what it took it, for me to get these out, and uh, uh, this is the way I like to have it. Not, you know, before you get <laughs> your bouquet of broken shit in there. Um, all right, we're going to give the customer a call and tell them it's done. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll throw the aftercooler uh, in here, throw a couple bolts on it, and, uh, and it's on its way. Um, as far as removing broken bolts, that's a get her done.